So what I'm going to show you now is how to create the walls, how to create custom walls, both for a stick type system or a storefront system where it's just a series of glass panels and mullions. And I'm, then I'm going to show you how to create a panelized system where you're actually designing an entire panel and then using that panel and applying it to a curtain wall. So I'm going to delete these first two and we'll deal with just the storefront wall for right now. And there's a couple of important things to point out about these walls. There we go. So the first thing I want to point out is you can see best from a floor plan view and that is where its location line is. So if I highlight this wall, you can see that for this, the, uh, the location line is going down the center of the mullions. Now, why that location line is important is for two reasons. One, that's the line that you draw the wall. When you're actually clicking points, that's the line that Revit is drawing that wall on. The second reason that it's important is that that is the line where all of your rooms are going to be bound to. So depending on whether you want to include the thickness of your curtain wall or storefront in the area of your room, that will determine where you want to put this, this location line. And that can be moved back and forth um, based on how you build this thing. So what are the controls with this, uh, with this curtain wall? Right now, we've got mullions, we've got glass, and we have a definite rep repetitive pattern here. So how is all that controlled? Well, you go into the edit type for this wall, and I didn't select the wall. For, so first we have to select the wall, and whenever you're selecting the wall, the entire thing uh, highlights all the way around the perimeter with this dashed line. So this wall, if we go back into the properties, we can see that the vertical grid pattern and the horizontal grid pattern here, this is what determines uh, where the mullions for this wall, where they actually are and how they're spaced. So I'm going to run a couple of tests here or just ex uh, show a couple of different versions of how we can deal with this wall. So we'll go to one of the elevations and I'm going to shorten it up just so that it's not quite as long. And so there we go. So the best way to sort of see what these walls are doing is to look at them in elevation. And so if we go into the edit type, you can see that the vertical grid pattern has a maximum spacing. That means that these vertical grids are being spaced as close as Revit can get them to being five feet, but at the same time maintaining an equal spacing all the way across the wall. So if I close those properties and I look at this, you can see that all of the panels all the way across, they're all perfectly equal. And if I dimension one of these, going from the center of the mullion to the center of the mullion, you can see that it's not five feet. It's actually a little bit less than five feet. And the reason for that is that it's taking the overall length of this wall and then dividing it however many times it needs to divide it in order to get as close to that five feet as it possibly can without actually going over. So if we hit the tab key until it's actually selecting the wall and say edit type. So we've got maximum spacing. Another choice, we've got several different choices here. Another choice would be ma uh, minimum spacing. And the minimum spacing works the same way as the maximum except it does the opposite. It tries to get as close to that five feet without actually going less than five feet. So if I were to use minimum spacing, it would, they would change size a little bit and I would get a number that is a little bit over five feet. So that's even closer to what we're looking for. However, if you want a, a definite number, if you want it to be exactly five feet, then you can't use the maximum or minimum spacing unless your wall is, say, exactly 15 feet long, then obviously it would divide it perfectly at five feet or anything that's divisible. And so we'll go back into the properties of this wall again, and we'll change it to a fixed distance. So the layout here will say fixed distance, five feet, and then we'll say OK. 
And so now everything adjusts, and you can see this panel now is exactly five feet. But what happens is that because this wall doesn't have an equal five foot spacing all the way along, it's not long enough to get that, we end up with this little oddball panel here on the end. So I'm just going to make that just a little bit bigger. So when you use the fixed distance, you end up with an oddball panel somewhere on the wall to make up for the fact that the wall does not divide evenly at five feet or whatever number that you're trying to, to use. So there's ways that you can control that, however. So if we go back into the properties again, hit tab until I select the wall, edit type, and so there is Sorry, it's not under edit type. It's actually a, a uh, instance parameter. Um, it, so it's an instance parameter, meaning that it can be different for every wall. And that is the justification. So we can say vertical grid pattern. The justification is to the beginning. Now, you have three choices. We have beginning, end, and center. When it's at the beginning, what that's referring to is the two clicks to draw the wall. The beginning is that first click. So I started the wall over here, so that's why it's, it has this oddball panel at the beginning of the wall. If I set it to the end, everything shifts over to the other side. And so now that oddball panel is over here at the end of the wall, or what Revit thinks of as the end of the wall. If I want to not have it on either side, I can do a center justification, and then that puts two different sized panels on either side. Now notice that when I did that, the panels themselves got a little bit larger, and that's just simply because Revit has readjusted how it's calculating these things, and it calculates that it can fit probably one less five-foot panel and have two equal panels on either side. So when you're creating these uh, curtain walls using out-of-the-box Revit curtain wall, this is how you can control it. And essentially everything that I just showed you with the vertical grid, you can do with the horizontal grid as well. So you have all of the same controls. So if I say uh, maximum spacing of three feet, it will readjust, it will adjust all of those horizontal members and it will put additional horizontal mullions in. And so I can adjust all of those things. I can make it fixed distance. I can make it maximum or minimum. Uh, the other thing that I can do is I can have a uh, max or a fixed number. So if I select the wall, edit type, I can create under horizontal. I also have the choice of fixed number. Now, when I choose fixed number, these gray out. And the fixed number is actually an instance parameter. So if I highlight that wall and I go into my instance properties, and we'll scroll to the horizontal grid pattern, it says number three. And that means there's th actually three mullions there. Now the key thing to remember when you're using the fixed number is that you can't have anything less than one. So if you're using the fixed number, you have to have at least one intermediate mullion. If I set this to zero, Revit won't accept it. It says it must go be from one to 200. So that's one thing to keep in mind, is if you're using the fixed distance, it has to have at least one intermediate. If you don't want any mullions at all, you just want verticals and no um, horizontals in your curtain wall at all, what you do is you go into type properties and rather than using fixed distance, fixed number, or any of those, you just simply click on none. And then it removes all of those mullions. Now what it's, at, what it's saying here is that I have a grid line associated with that mullion, and I have now removed that mullion, so it's removing the grid line. And this is just a check. It says delete grid line, it's fine. Just say delete it and OK, and then it disappears. And so that's how you can create a curtain wall that has no horizontal members.